Photoshop with web design. One is uh, this banner here behind uh, leadership is uh, actually created in Photoshop and it has a specific size and as you can see as we shrink this down the background image gets clipped and also I want to show you how to create a cool little effect like this where you can put text on top of that's kind of a faded out uh, background so I'm going to show you those both really quick so I have both the images here that I want to use uh, I couldn't find the original images of these so we're just going to use uh, this one here uh, to replace so first um, I need the dimensions of this here now I just happen to know that it's 1920 by 250 pixels uh, there's a few different ways you can go about doing that but we're not going to go over that in this episode or this uh, the screencast so it's 1920 by 250 pixels now 1920 actually ha actually happens to be uh, high definition or HD resolution now e retina screens actually go larger than this but you can easily fix that if you see how it fades into black on both sides you can just put a black background behind that and then that'll fill in uh, it'll so it'll go black to black and then you won't even have to worry about how small or large this the uh, background is because it's it, it goes into the solid color so anyway let's go over here I'm going to uh, go to image size and first I want to make sure that the width is 1920 pixels right the other way you can do that is by uh, hitting command option I and that will also bring up the image size box now the one thing I need to do now I'll go to crop and because I know this is this is right here as you can see is 1440 pixels high I only have 250 pixels to work with and as you can see here I get us I, I try and get everybody's face in there right so the most important thing is for me to get everybody's face in right so I'm gonna do that and then uh, now we're down to 537 pixels and you can see real quick this is probably not going to work right so as you can see it's not going to work that's why I have the 1920 pixels and then this is faded into a black background so let me go back and back again I'm gonna go back to the original 1920 by 1440 now I'm gonna make a new so command N or file new right and I'm gonna make my 1920 by 250 pixel with 72 resolution which is for the web uh, document make sure it's on pixels right I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, make this a layer and then uh, by double clicking on it and just hitting enter it just creates that into a layer or you can just add another layer on top of it doesn't matter or you, I don't think you really need to make it a layer but I'm just gonna make this into a black background then I'm gonna take this image here I'm gonna drag this out I'm gonna let's go back here I'm gonna hit V to change to the pointer I'm gonna drag the photo in here and so now there's 192020 and then I'm going to hit command T or edit transform and I'm going to sh uh, hold shift down to keep the the aspect ratio the same so when I drag uh, it, it keeps the uh, ratio correct and then I'm going to find a nice place for this photo to live right in the middle something right close to that maybe a little bit smaller right and that looks good right and it doesn't have to be perfectly centered it really doesn't you know if it does you know you can do that or not then there's something called layer mask right here right and you click on that while selecting the layer and it creates this little box and as you can see if I click on the picture and then I click on the mask it selects one or the other we need to make sure that we're selected on the mask and now what we can do is it's sensitive to white and black so basically if it's black uh, it will remove part of the picture if it's white it'll keep the picture so as you can see it's all white now so it's showing everything but if I put a gradient here right that goes from white to black as you can see here this is the gradient um, and then you can see here it shows that little bit of a gradient in the mask you can see it kind of fades in now if I went over here and did it right it would remove that one and add the one over here I don't want that 
right? So in order to get the same effect over here, I'm going to do the marquee tool and I'm going to select this over here. So now I can still be in a layer mask with this selection and then go back to gradient and voila. Now I have, let's see if that's uh, similar to our, yeah, so it's pretty good. Um, maybe I'll fade it out a little more to make it kind of the same. And we'll just go like that. We'll command D to deselect. And then now we have a pretty nice picture. Now the thing with Photoshop is if we just go file save right um, and save it as a JPEG it's not going to be properly compressed right it's not it's still going to be a pretty large size so what we want to do is go to actually file save for web and devices but I usually use the shortcut which is command option shift s and it brings up this this uh, box here right and we could save it as a GIF or a JPEG or a PNG um, for transparency, I usually for pictures like this for people and a lot of colors I usually do JPEG with the quality you can mess around with this but the cool thing is is you can even continue to lower the quality and as you can see the, there's really not that much of a difference in the picture I usually like staying around 60 just to you know I don't know whatever I guess it's personal preference at some point you know. um, and if it gets a little larger you know it tends to get pixelated like if I went down to 20 here right you can you can see the pixelation if I go up to 40 you can see a little bit if I go up to 60 you really can't see any but it's a lot lower than 100 and and you can see here the estimated file size 64.09 and I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna save that uh, just as you know background whatever you want to save it as wherever you want to save it and so now we created our background image which is pretty cool now the next thing we needed to do was create this background image here and so uh, to get the size of that we're actually going to use the inspect element so we'll right click inspect element or F11 I believe um, the thing with right clicking if you right click on the element and inspect the element it'll go right to that or it should have it'll go right to that element right and so we have this div of news here and then if I go over here I can see I can put my mouse over the background image right and then it shows me the pixel size as you can see uh, 370 by 400 so I need this here to be 370 by 400 and it's actually in the opposite aspect ratio I'm gonna make it a little lower if you command minus or plus you can make your image smaller or larger right so I need this in proper place to crop it so I'm gonna take my cropping tool and I'm gonna you know because the height has to be a little higher than the width I'm going to uh, you know kinda eyeball it right to estimate where I want to do this so I'm gonna do that then I'm gonna go into image size I'm gonna go 370 width but the thing is uh, it's better like if I make that 370 width, I only, I only have 383 height to work with. I need it to be at least 400. So what I'm going to do is go to 400. Then I could crop some more down off of the width because it's larger than what I need. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Command Plus to zoom in. This is the actual size of the photo. Then I'm going to go to Canvas Size. And what Canvas Size does is it um, image size first makes your photo larger or bigger and it doesn't crop or anything. Canvas size will actually either add or remove from your, your canvas. So actually if I make the canvas size smaller than what the image is, it's going to crop this part off. So that's what I kind of want. So I'm going to do 370 pixels and then actually tells me it's actually going to crop my photo here. So I'm going to proceed. As you can see it cropped a little bit off of each side. And now my photo is 370 by 400. But the last thing we need to do is actually make it give us this like kind of black opaque kind of uh, opacity here and easily I'm just gonna add a new layer on top I'm gonna make that layer black and then I'm just gonna take the opacity of the layer make it maybe 80 percent and you know I can make it you know higher or lower depending and that looks good I'm gonna save for web and devices as I did before command option shift s I'm gonna take this I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna do uh, save it again and there are my two photos for the web now one last thing I will show you is uh, there's a bunch of different apps that do this 
the one I use is image opt-in I got it from the Apple App Store I think it's like a dollar or two I don't even know if it still exists on there I got this a while ago but there are so many tools like this or similar to this and there's also web apps called one called smush it by uh, I think Yahoo and then um, tinypng.org that that compresses PNGs there's a lot out there and so basically what this does is it removes all of the metadata from the JPEGs and because when you upload your photos to the web you don't need any extra information that photos or JPEGs usually store within the file right it's something you can't see so I'm um, literally go here and take both of my photos and drag them over here and we'll, we saved one, we saved 7.7%, the other we saved 6.5%, and we actually reduced those file sizes without compromising any quality. So uh, that's just another little tip to help you out in really producing quality and lightweight images for the web. Hope you guys enjoyed.